Hey, good morning to you, Jose. Could you give a short introduction about yourself? Hi there. My name is Jose, guys. Started with the real world about uh, six months ago. Um, my age is 29 years old. Um, started uh, with the real world, um, entering the stock market. Um, that's a little bit about me right now. Okay. So stocks, what made you decide to choose stocks over any other options that are in the, in the real world? So I started doing crypto um, about a, almost two years ago when it started popping off, like with Bitcoin, Dogecoin. So that that's where I started with my bigger profits, but they were more like not really strategic. I just got into it at a good time. And once I had a good capital amount, I wanted to learn how to do trade options. Um, before I got into the real world, um, I was doing really bad stuff, as in I, w I lost a lot of shares because I just didn't know how to play it right. Um, mm -hmm. Once I saw the real world was reopening again, I just decided to pull the trigger and actually join in. Um, once it, it the the university opened up and everything, I joined the first course I could ju jump onto. So I got into the stocks. Um, within three days, I started focusing in on how to understand stocks, how they work, how options work, Greeks and everything. I started on Friday um, at 9.30 p.m. just because I work full time and I finished it around 11 25 a.m. and I started trading on my first week first week's profits I started with 268 dollars and I was able to get up to about a thousand dollars it did it did take a lot of work because a lot of it did require a lot of like holding it till a few days to grow it so that's how I was able to grow my money with 268 even though it was recommending me to start with 2000 okay and uh, a lot to go into there, but to follow up on what you just said. So how much have you made since starting with stocks and the stocks campus? So as of right now, I'm, I'm sitting with $12,000 thanks to the real world. Okay. So from $268 to $12,000 in what time span? And over six months. In six months. Okay. Congratulations. I mean, definitely good figures there. Now, did you have any prior experience with stock trading uh, outside of the things you were trying with options? No, I had a, I had some like um, some moderate level of like like technical analysis. I just didn't know really how to uh, implement it, implement it in the in the stock market. Okay. And then, how did the real world help you with that? So when so how it helped me is with all the videos and obviously the professors being in, in the in the universities. I was able to ask some questions, ask everyone else, but I strongly just stuck to asking questions to the professor and watching his videos. Um, if I didn't understand a video, I would always rewatch it again and make sure I had a firm understanding to it by taking notes. Mm -hmm. And you're saying you watched the videos just throughout the night? Did I get that right? Correct. So again, from was it 9.30 p.m. till around 11 a.m., just straight throughout the night? Correct. <laughs> and how did you retain that information? And so, what was uh, the reasoning there as well for just doing it for the night instead of maybe taking a more balanced approach of splitting it up into evenings? So the thing, the thing about me is like once I start something, I want to finish it. So for me, I was like, I really want to understand it. And how I was able to retain it is obviously taking notes of it and at the same time implement it. At, as the professor was showing the video, I was um, pulling up a random chart. Let's say, for example, Apple. Um, I would start making lines, ba uh, base boxes, trend lines. Try to see, if, can I? Am I seeing what the professor's seeing? And how I would test it out is figure out what worked for me, what didn't work for me, tweak some stuff. Um, so it, it's been a journey. So that's one thing with the videos it showed me is that it's a lot of ninety percent psychology, ten percent technical analysis technical analysis so i was able to see that i don't have to spend a whole lot of time on reviewing my technicals but it's once i have a clean setup it's more of just making sure i follow through with it interesting okay what was the biggest challenge you faced when you were first starting out with stocks um it, w it was like with my little bit of capital reason i started with that amount it was like can i grow this small amount into a bigger amount and mm -hmm. along the way am i gonna pick up good habits or am, and am I going to pick up bad habits? So it was almost like half and half. So I learned more about myself that I picked up really good habits on how to make money with, with a very short capital. 
it did take a lot longer. So when I would see other people's wins, I would see the wins would be a lot greater than mine, even though mine did take a little bit longer to grow. Once I had more capital to play with, obviously I could buy more contracts, expensive ones like Tesla, S&P 500, uh, QQQ. Um, I was able to buy more in quantity and I wouldn't have to sit in the market for that much. Um, bad habits were, were more like I was doing things that were working for me, which made no sense to me. And then I was making money off of it. And those are the bad habits that started developing because at that point it destroyed my confidence. It destroyed my, um, uh, my, my ability to trust myself. And that's where those bad habits, I had to take a step back, journal everything and figure out what I was doing good, what I was doing wrong. So pretty much I had to retrain myself. And thankfully for with the real world, I can always have access to those videos. So I started rewatching them from the very beginning and, and I did it again. Interesting. Okay. So a whole process of rebuilding yourself as you know, going through it, learning from mistakes, then rebuilding, going again. So how different is your average day now then compared to before you joined the real world? So how it is now is I'm only spending about 30 to maybe max 40 minutes in the market. And I'm already done by at my time because I, I live it, I live in California. So if the market opens at 630 for at my time, I'm usually done for the day at 705, 720. So what a nurse's salary makes in an um in a day, I'm pretty much making it in 40 minutes. So it's all thanks to the real world. Mm hmm. Interesting. And yeah, you're not over trading, no FOMO there. You just uh, do your time in the morning and then that's it gets out, right? Correct. And the moment I notice I'm FOMOing, I immediately stop all trading and I just get up, walk away, or uh, I'll, I'll do some push-ups in my room to get me refocused and recentered. Okay. So since you're just spending the first few hours trading, what are you doing the rest of the day then? So I work a full-time job. I'm an assistant manager for AT&T. So mm -hmm. I help all my employees uh, make sales. So that's where I feel like it really helps me out with trading because I also have to coach them to make really good behaviors. So when I notice I'm doing a bad behavior, I immediately coach myself. So as in like, hey, this is what you did bad. This is what you did horrible. You need to fix this right away. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even at my work, I'll explain some stuff to my employees like, hey, what I'm coaching you guys on is it's all free stuff. When I'm doing it, when I'm doing my stock market, I can only hold myself accountable. If I don't coach myself, I'm losing a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And when I'd like to go a bit more into that, when coaching other people, how much have you seen their ego being involved or do you find a way around it? Um, I see a lot of ego. Thing is, um, where, where I'm working at, they're very union strong. So they want to have domain over it. Like yesterday, um, I had an incident where reps were challenging were challenging my authority because of their ego. Um, they're, they were trying to prove me wrong. So easily for me is they know that if they're going to talk to me, I'll back it up. So as in, I pull up policy, tell them like, okay, look it up, look for versus resources. What, what does it stay right there? Use your resources. So they'll always be challenging, saying like, no, I'm right, you're wrong. And I'm going to tell you where in policy it doesn't say that. And once I pull it up and they see it, they their ego gets destroyed. And it's even worse when there's other people around them saying like, oh, my gosh, this employee that's had 15 years just got shut down by an assistant manager. So then it gets everybody back in line again. Interesting. Okay. So going back to trading, could you talk a bit more about the system you've developed or would you prefer to keep that confidential? No, I definitely, I, I don't mind sharing it. Like I, if, if this means um, I can, I, people can see the world, world actually helps out a lot of people, I'm more than happy to share my, my, my setups. So generally, um, first thing is wake up early in the day. So don't wait for the market to open up right at, at, at open. Um, so what I do is wake up at 4.30 in the morning. Um, I look at pre-market. I look at see what's going on. Um, I also have the news up, just making sure if there's anything like important coming out. Um, I'm more of a TA, so I'm not much of a news person. But like obviously, if something significant and the government's going on, then I'll, I'll keep an eye on it. But once that opens up, I create a base box from 1 a.m. till 7 a.m. 
So what that does, I create a range. So it has to have like three touches on the top and bottom. So so what that means is that it has to be able to hold. Let's say if you can only find two touches, that's fine. It has to have at least two or three. Um, depending on how the market's going to be moving, if it breaks above, we're going to be bullish. If it breaks below, we're going to be bearish. And generally, my system from trading is depending on where everyone's at in the world, I always give it about a five to eight minute because I've noticed it that um, it, it, beca- it, pick, uh, it picks up a pattern between um, five minutes after the market opens, it starts to pick a direction. And if you want further confirmation, you give it three more minutes. And then usually from there, it already picks a direction of going either to an uptrend or a downtrend. And as it's moving, I'm creating levels that it couldn't break above, which is known as a higher high. Or if, same thing for similar if it couldn't break below of higher low. As it's doing too, I'm creating trend lines, making sure whatever trade I'm going into, that it's going to be validated and not be invalidated. Um, so that's generally pretty much how I do my setups. I try to be done at the market between 7.50 at most, maybe 8 a.m. at most. But because I noticed that around that time, the market starts becoming very volatile and very choppy. Um, I think it's because uh, I went to, I was studying mathematics. Um, I kind of stopped for a bit, but uh, I kind of noticed those patterns. So I, I kept notes on that. Saying so like, okay, trade from the moment the market opens until eight. If you want to go back into the market, you want to go into it like around 11 my time. That's when the market starts having more movement again, more clean setups. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. And do you always find the trade on that day or sometimes are there just no trades following your system? Um, out of my system, I would say it's an 80%. And that 20% where it fails would be like how the professor would say, there's a million things that it can always go different. So generally it could be due to emotion, thinking that it's going to go back. So that's where that 20% mostly falls in there. Thinking I'm trying to prove my system right, but 80% of it, it's always working. So that's why um, I, I've been sticking to it. Okay. And do you always get a trade that day with the system? Or do you sometimes have to, if it doesn't follow the system properly, do you just not take the trade that day? Um, so far, if it, it's always worked in the system. At minimum, I try to keep it at four trades a day. Okay. Um, but minimum, at least one. But if I don't see anything at all, I won't even jump into it. But if I see one tra- if I see one clean setup, I'll jump into it. Okay. And if I notice that's going to be a, a reversal in, in the market, I just immediately cut the trade and I take whatever profits I made or whatever little loss that I might have taken. Mm-hmm. And then how often does that happen that you just don't find the right setup for the trade that day? Um, at the moment, it has not happened to me yet. And generally, the, the, when it has happened, it's when I wanted to go back into the market. So let's say I already made a good amount from since the market opened and once it hit like 7.50 in the morning. And let's say it's my day off from work. I would tr- try to re-enter the market around 10, thinking, oh, this is a setup right here, but not realizing that it's it's not a good setup. The moment I lose that trade, I just immediately just call it a day. Okay. Completely fair. Okay. And how has your trading journey progressed then throughout the months since December? Since uh, since December, I've learned more of what worked for me in my system and what didn't. So I used to have like the RSI. I used to have the MACD, which I got rid of both of them. Um, I've, I have only use two indicators, which is um, the volume and the squeeze pro that the uh, professor recommended. Everything else, I'm just using um, just trend lines. That's it. Uh, creating supply and support levels um because i used to have like about like what 10 indicators i used to have um rsi macd all this stuff and what i noticed is that there was so much clutter in my screen that it was so hard for me to figure out like was this a good setup was it bad and generally when i was entering the market i was letting go of profits i could have gotten in a lot sooner once Mm -hmm. i started eliminating the ones that worked and what didn't work I, that's when I started seeing uh, better better profits and less time on the computer. Interesting. Okay. And with volume, do you prefer to trade when there's higher volume or lower volume? 
So with it goes back to my setup. Um, I look at the volume and I have these uh, checkoffs. I'm like, OK, cool. Is the volume high? All right, perfect. Has it breaking above my my higher high level? If it has, then I jump into a market. But generally, when it, that happens, I go into a very with a low with a low quantity of contracts. I try to make sure I'm not over trading. So this way, if it for any reason it reverses on me, I can immediately cut the trade and only take a minimal loss. Um, but if it continues, um, I'm okay with that as well. Interesting. Okay, thank you for all those insights. Very educational for even myself. So yeah, I appreciate that. What kind of an impact has Tate had on you? Did he have the influence on you to join the real world? Did you join for a different reason? And then yeah, impact on you personally. With Tay, he's an incredible person. Honestly, he's changed me a lot. It kind of changed my psychology and mental. Um, I started working out a lot more. So I will. I would always work out, but it was always based off an emotion, not really of like, hey, I just got to do it. Um, Tay has influenced me a lot. Even at my work, they dislike me because I have an Andrew Tate shirt that I'll wear before going to work and they hate it. Um, but I told, I, I literally say that Andrew Tate did save me. It saved me a lot because I was trying to find a way how to make money. But the thing is, is that uh, how Andrew Tate said in one of his podcasts that a lot of people charge so much ridiculous money. And some of the stuff that they're trying to teach you is stuff that you could have easily found somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, It's ridiculous the amount you have to pay here. And you learn so much. I've tried to get my friends to join. They're still hesitant on it because they don't like Andrew Tate. But I told them, like, but the thing is, they're liking the, the money I'm making. So they're like, dude, can I join in? Will I make the same amount of money? I'm like, the thing is, you will, but it's not it's not for everybody. It's it requires a lot of work, a lot of hard work. It isn't like where you go to a regular job from nine to five where you're someone's writing you a paycheck. You're writing your own paycheck based off on how disciplined and how consistent you are. All right. Because, yeah, I mean, even something like waking up at 430 a.m. every morning. Some people just won't be able to handle even just that part of it. So yeah, uh, definitely a strong mentality you've shown in order to get where you are. And uh, just interested, is it Resist the Slave Mind, that shirt that you walk into your job with or a different one? Oh, Which one is it? It's the Top G. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then uh, Andrew, uh, Andrew Tate uh, um, right below it and then and, and also my back on there. Okay. And is that completely fine in your workplace then? They just allow that? No one's bothered to the point where you might get in trouble for it? Um, I've gotten some 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 criticism on it. Um I obviously can't do can't wear it during work hours, but before and after, that's why oh, they seem to wear it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, they 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 de- definitely may have made comments to it. Um I've gone up to HR before because of it but it's like it's um i always i always use the freedom of speech i'm like i'm gonna keep wearing it you know this guy really saved me he changed my mentality he's made me money i respect him i'll back him up 100 mm-hmm. percent um no matter what people will say about him um he always had my support all right all right yeah i mean the count and you're not an isolated incident there's so many people who i've interviewed who have shown the testimonies of how much their life has their life has changed because of Andrew Tate and because of the real world. So yeah, definitely something that's uh, been replicated several times, hundreds of times that is. Okay. Now, since you're on this trajectory, where do you see your life heading in the short term, medium term and long term? So short term right now is going in the direction I want. Um, joining other universities uh, but first, I want to capitalize on the stocks first, making sure that I'm able to take care of that business and it's always going to be upfloat. So this way I can go into the more of the e-commerce one, like go into the copywriting and use my skills background to also uh, take advantage of that on that side. Um, long, like midterm to long term is growing this account realistically i want to hit about a million at the end of this year and i know it's very possible um i know with everything that the professors are providing and everybody that's in the group i know it's very possible and capable um it's just more a matter of discipline and consistency and making sure i stick to that plan at all times 
Mm-hmm. Right. That makes sense. And with that goal of 1 million, we'll be doing follow-ups. If you're interested in about three months, we can do a follow-up, see how that's progressing. In another three months, that'll be at the end of the year. So by yeah. then, let's see if you hit that target. And yeah, we'll be keeping you accountable for that. Definitely. Perfect. So to end off now, what what would you say to people who are unsure about joining the real world? Maybe they're thinking it could be a scam for the fifty dollars. What advice mm-hmm. would you give them? Honestly, what I would advice I would give to everybody is give an opportunity. Um, before I would always be thinking about where can I spread my money at. Um, if you can easily spend like five dollars every day for an energy drink at a at a at a gym, it's gonna equate to be a lot. Um, the thing is with the real world is you're taking a big leap and a big, a big opportunity, but just be aware if it doesn't work out for you guys, it doesn't, but no, it does require a lot of work. And if you work and do you work, you work your hardest, you're going to see big returns and big rewards. Um, if you guys ever want to shoot me a DM or anything like that, obviously, if you want to share that to them, I'm more than happy to share all my gains. Literally, my friends will ask me every single day how much I made today, how much I did make yesterday. Um, I'll gladly share it with you. I'll even, I've even have um, students that watch me as I'm trading um, just so they can see what I'm doing. And it's real money. I'll screenshot it to you guys. I've already made so much. So $50 to me is nothing to me. But the thing is, being able to go with other people like-minded is the best thing ever because there's different universities that fit into your skill set. All right. Different campuses, yeah, completely fair. And for people who do want to find out more about you or contact you and join your Discord, where can they do so? Do so. Um, you guys can find me on social media. It's uh, Instagram. It's going to be Jose M Ramirez underscore. Um, it has it. It has an uh, God. What's that NFT called? An an ape ape <laughs> monkey or ape gorilla as my profile pic. Uh, the yacht yacht club ones. Yacht club, yacht yeah. Club. Yeah. Okay, so I'll add the Instagram to the description of the video. So anyone listening, check that. <clears throat> and yeah, Jose, I look forward to the follow up interview. Uh, message me in about three months. Let me know. Hey, Rockus, it's been three months. I know time flies, so let's do that follow up. And yeah, we'll see where you are. Definitely. Right, and until then, I wish you all the best. Thank you, Rickus.